Hello everyone, I am Cool Guy. welcome back, and today we're going to take an in-depth look at fusion rifles, how they work, basic player health stats, and a technique to get a tighter projectile grouping for more consistent one-shot kills in PvP. I had a game yesterday where I had 19 Dark Blade Spite kills out of 24 in a Rumble match, pretty insane, and my Dark Blade Spite has zero stability perks on it. And I've researched, tested, and now would like to show you guys a technique to make the spread of your fusion rifle projectiles tighter, regardless of stability. Pretty, isn't it? With fusions, we know that they have a charge time and they shoot out a burst of energy, and that burst holds seven projectiles. They travel in a cone pattern out of your weapon as they make their way towards your target. In 2.2, they got increased stability base stat by 40% across the board, and lower stability fusion rifles are affected more than higher stability ones. Before we talk about tightening up the spread, we need to understand not only how fusion rifles work, but also the health of our opponents, because a player's health varies. We'll say that a low armor guardian will be about 190, middle is going to be about 200, and high is a little under 210. Some players' health are a little bit lower than that. Example, you can two-shot low armor guardians with the first curse, and some can be higher than that. Think max armor ram warlock or max armor titan. For the stats, charge time, it's the time it takes for the charge to come out, it's pretty simple. Slower charge times pack a little bit more of a punch, and faster charge times deal less damage, but you can shoot them faster. For the range stat, it has to do with projectile travel speed, so the higher the range stat, the faster your charge is going to reach your target. Range is different on this weapon than any other weapon in the game, and fusion rifles do suffer small damage drop off, but this is at the extreme range for the particular fusion rifle that you're using. Remember. The beam of energy just kind of dissipates into nothing. It's not like you can't get a kill at far ranges, because you can. Once you start seeing a different number for the fusion rifle that you're using, you're pushing its extended effective range. Like my Dark Blade right here, it does 50 per projectile, but at this range it does 48. Which is still good, and that makes the Dark Blade stand out. We'll talk about it in a little bit later. Or right here, my Vacancy does 49 per projectile, but on this deep one, I land for 44. The stability, important stat as well, just like pulse rifles, the higher stability that you have, the tighter their projectiles are going to be within the burst. When they leave your fusion, they go onto your target. So fusions have a natural upwards recoil when you shoot them. Higher stability lessens the visual upwards recoil while grouping the actual recoil traveling to your target. So since it's grouped tighter, in exchange, you're actually increasing your range. Impact is the damage dealt per projectile, and there is a difference in them, an important difference in them. One may do 47, one may do 49. So you can take that information and take that magical number of 200 for a, an average Guardian's health and decide what you need to land to get a kill. So for whatever fusion rifle that you're using, pay close attention to the damage per projectile that you're doing. I did some testing on the ones that I have so you guys can have a base to go off of. Now pay attention to the annotations on screen. Remember, they shoot 7 projectiles and we want those projectiles to hit our target. So we're going to put up damage for a 4th and 5th projectile hit. For some fast charging fusions that I have, the Vortex and the Long Far Gone both do 40 damage per bullet. That's 160 if you land 4 and 200 if you hit 5. Then we jump to the Ash Raven, 47 per projectile. So 4 will do 188, 5 will do 235. And the Ash Raven is one of my top 3 favorite fusions in the game, mostly because I have Rescue Mag on it. If you have Rescue Mag on any special weapon, use it. It's that good. Now the Plan C does four different projectile numbers, and this is because of accelerated coils and field choke, and I want to show you guys something. If you run anything other than those two, like the popular Smart Drift Control Hammer Forge, the Plan C does 47 per projectile, so that's 188 and 235. If you add field choke, you will do 48 per projectile, that's 192 and 240. If you add accelerated coils, you do 44 per projectile, and you get a much faster charge rate, that's 176 for four of them, and five is 220. If you add field choke to accelerated coils, you'd now do 45 per projectile, 180 and then 225. So it's confusing, I know. It can either do 45, 44, 47, 48. I recommend running field choke and hammer forged or field choke and accelerated coils, so for 48 or 45. The gunsmith's Thesen does 48, so 4 is 192, 5 is 240. The Trials of Osiris Elevating Vision is 49, so 196 and 245. The Vacancy, get this one. If you don't have it, get it. If you like fusion rifles, 49. So again, it's 196 and 245. Then we have Dark Blade Spite. It does 50 per projectile, so four of them will be your 200, the magic number, and five is 250. So if you're a fusion rifle user, try to grind this out. It's one of the best out there. When the nightfall comes up, just do it over and over and over. Get as many rolls as you can. Its base range is the highest of all the legendaries, and it's only beat out by the Plan C. Its impact is one of a kind at 50, and it's just a very powerful fusion. Try to get one with Braced for increased ability, but you can live without it if you don't. Mine doesn't, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Then we have the Hitchhiker, abysmal charge rate, abysmal base stability. It does 51 per projectile. If you add accelerated coils, it does 49. Impact, damage per projectile, it's a very important stat, and it's very hard to research, and it's one of those things you just have to do because I was finding some that have the same exact impact but are doing different projectile numbers. So, again, whichever one that you're using, pay attention to what it's hitting for. Do some quick math, and you know where it stands as far as projectile to kill. 
Before we get into this, I wanna point out that there's no right way, there's no wrong way to shoot a fusion rifle. There's just different ways. And I want you to have these in your tool set and not be limited to just shooting them one way. Most of the time, you need to land five out of the seven projectiles to get the one-shot kill. And I wanna show you how to land the majority of the burst and land those consistent one-shot kills, regardless of stability. There are two widely used methods, and the first one is the most common one I see. It's to aim low, almost at the feet, let the recoil come up and hit the target. So the further you are away from your target, the lower that you aim, it's very effective. And what's happening is the fusion rifle has that upwards pop in the recoil, so you're playing to the recoil of the weapon, letting it fly, and the projectiles go up into the target. The second way is to charge it from the hip and then aim down sights as the projectiles come out. So when you charge from the hip, you still have your field of view, you still have your mobility, you can center your target, and then aim down sights. So as you're charging from the hip, you aim down sights when the burst comes out and you take away a little bit of that visual recoil. Then there's the way that I'm going to show you, and it was very important to talk about the stats of them, the impact, the range, the stability, the time to kill, the projectile to kill. Because we're going to have this hitchhiker right here, and I chose the hitchhiker as the perfect example to show you because of its low base stability. So if I just shoot the weapon, imagine it, it's just like that first way, right? I'm aiming low, the burst travels up into my target, and this is how most people shoot it. And again, there's nothing wrong with it, it works. But the way I shoot them is to fight the recoil and guide the projectiles down. And this is a pretty good distance away, and that's with low, horrible stability on a fusion rifle. But look at the tightness of the spread. Throughout this video, if you go back and watch, I'm doing this for over 90% of my kills. So let's walk through this, let's break this down. You can control the burst and I encourage you to control the burst. You can do this by either aiming down sights and then doing it, or charging from the hip then shooting the burst as it comes out. Now what I mean by guiding the projectiles down is this. The regular fusion shot, it pops up. The recoil you see correlates with the spread, it's going up. So the more stability that you have, the less that it pops up, meaning the gun recoil doesn't go up as far so the projectiles don't go up as far, it's pretty simple. But right as the burst comes out, or as the burst is coming out, and the recoil pattern starts, apply a little down tension on your right thumbstick. Bring your reticle down. So by doing this, you're pulling the projectiles down. Think of it like cracking a whip. Every single fusion rifle has a sweet spot to where the projectiles will group very, very close together. And it doesn't matter if you have high stability. It doesn't matter if you have low stability. The best example I can give you is that hitchhiker example. So if you take the plan C, you have smart drift control, perfect balance, giving it the most stability it could possibly get, and then shoot like you normally would by aiming low, you can see what kind of projectiles you're working with. Then let's put on field choke, let's put on hammer forge, taking away the two stability stats, adding one more impact and a faster stream of projectiles. Even if you take out those stability perks and do this, you can still make them group tighter. The more stability that you have, the less tension you have to pull down on the stick, and the least stability that you have, the more that you have to resist the recoil. So once you try this out, you'll get a feel for it. Every fusion is different, they all have different recoil direction stats, and you're going to find that sweet spot where your reticle stays essentially straight when popping it down. Even a weapon like the Vacancy, it's a perfect fusion rifle, max ability, and it's one of those weapons that you don't really have to do this with, it shoots beautifully, but if you do, you can still make the spread even tighter than it already is, and have more control over it. And that's what's nice about the high stability ones, it's that you can control them. I mean, I'm not talking about max stability either, I'm talking about like 50% stability, because you can do more things. You can come up to a head glitch spot, start at the head, and drive the stream down into their body with ease. You can almost snipe them with it. Or say someone's on the stairs, you find them, you center to them, you can aim at them, then just drive that stream down. And just like my Ash Raven in the beginning of the video, I am doing this with it, and look where the stability's at. It's almost pretty much max, but you can still group it really, really tight. And by throwing the right stick down and compensating for the recoil, you're doing three important things. One, you're going to group them tighter so you can land more consistent one-shot kills at medium range. Two, since you're grouping them tighter, you're starting the spread tighter and you can land longer fusion rifle shots. And three, you're not having to aim at the floor all the time. You can start mid-body mass or lower abdomen and then drive the projectiles down. I believe that inserting this technique in your tool set will make you way more lethal with them, and having that third method, you can adapt to all situations. So instead of aiming at someone's feet at mid-range, you can aim a little bit higher, like I said, even center body mass, and still group the spread of your projectiles tightly enough to get a consistent one-shot kill. If you have an enemy jumping up in the air at you, you can let the projectiles fly. Aim low, let them go up into the target. It opens you up to more opportunity. So go on patrol, find a wall to test on, bring some special ammo with you to pop when you're out, and try this. Get a feel for it. It's one of those things that you have to try for yourself and see it with your own eyes. It takes practice, but it does pay off. I hope that you guys learned something from this video, and get back to me in the comments if this technique worked out for you. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.